Hello everybody, Mr. Guyette here to talk to you about models in science today. So what is a model? Well, when you think of the word model, you probably think of like a model car, or a model airplane, or maybe even a model who walks down a runway showing off clothes. You know, there's lots of things we think of when we think of models, but in science, the word model is something very specific. The word model means a set of ideas that explain a natural phenomenon. So what is a phenomenon? Well, phenomenon is anything that you can observe. So if you see the sun going up in the morning and going down at night, that's a phenomenon. If you see stars moving across the sky, that's phenomenon. Uh, the earth shaking violently or a forest fire or a tornado, these are all phenomenon. Anything, anything you observe in nature, but you don't really know why it happens at first, well, that's where models come into play, is a model is an attempt to explain exactly what it is you're seeing. So let's take a um, long time ago, when the sun first came up in the morning, people watched it travel across the sky, and then they saw it go down in the evening. So everybody just assumed that the sun was this big yellow circle that circled around the earth, going around and around. And nobody questioned this for a long time until people started to make observations, like you just learned about, and they made quantitative observations by measuring stars at night, and they eventually saw that some stars traveled backwards, or some planets traveled, not stars, but planets that they observed, because they've known there have been planets out there for hundreds and hundreds of years, and those planets sometimes travel backwards, not the right direction like they're supposed to, they go the other way. And that doesn't make any sense if they're traveling around the Earth all the time. And so this guy named Copernicus, you might have heard of, eventually came up with this idea that, well, it's not the Earth that's at the center and everything moving around it. It's actually the Earth is moving around the sun. And all these other planets are moving around the sun, too. So that was his model or his explanation. So a model can be just words. Sometimes it can be a picture. Like for instance, behind me this way, I drew a picture of a helium atom. This is actually called a Bohr model of an atom because nobody really knows what an atom looks like. They're so small, you can fit hundreds of trillions of them on the head of a pin. So nobody's ever seen one, even with the best microscopes. So all we have are models. Sometimes models can also be things that we have seen, but we wanna like demonstrate like this eyeball. This eyeball is a model of an organ in your body, your eye. So if you, you can use the model to see things we can't actually see just by looking at our eyes. You can see where the muscles attach. You can see where the optic nerve is in the background. So this model is very useful. And then other times we definitely need models to see things that we can't see at all, like this one. This is DNA. DNA is so tiny we don't know you know, what it actually looks like, but this model explains everything that we know about DNA and all its parts. So this is very useful. So a model not only explains natural phenomenon, it's consistent with all of the observations that we can see. So all the data we collect about an observation has to support that model. So if anytime we collect data and it doesn't support the model, then we have to throw out our model. It just won't work. So and models are extremely useful too because they allow us to make predictions about things. Because Copernicus made that model of his about how the planets travel around the sun and it turned out to be correct, we can actually predict where the planets will be at any given time into the future. In fact, that's how they know exactly what day you're gonna see a solar eclipse like how you, how you know the moon is going to pass in front of the sun like 75 years from now, right down to the closest second, because we can predict so well using models. And so we, can, we know how DNA interacts with other things and how DNA ended up copying itself, which you're going to learn later this year, how that works, just because the model is so good that we can use it to predict how things would actually work, even though we can't see them. Okay, so models can be used to make predictions. They explain phenomenon. If ever they don't explain a phenomenon, then we have to get rid of the model. It's no good. 
So models are constantly being changed and upgraded when new information comes. So that's pretty much it for models. So um, thank you for watching. Adios.